devoted so much time and effort. And uh, he was so excited. I was talking to him yesterday about his uh, nephew, Dylan Little yes, Hales. Yes, he's just broke won through, a gold medal at the uh, Sprint World. Broke through for his first ever para canoe gold medal, and it was a wonderful moment for, for Dylan. He's had a tough year off the course, but uh, he was uh, a wonderful recipient of that gold medal, and Mike was very, very proud yesterday. Joe Clark on the course now. The 2016 Olympic gold medalist, we saw him in the introduction talk about the journey he's been on. He's become a father this year, which has uh, given him an extra... Oh, Joe! What the heck? It's a strategic touch there. Yeah, it's strategic, all right. Bang. Oh, that was fast. That was very fast, but he needs to now because he's got to make up two seconds somewhere on this course. He's got to make... Mind you, the man at the top of the leaderboard at the moment also has a touch. So, oh, wow. Wow, Joe has really pinned those two upstreams. Has he ever? This is going to be a very fast raw time. And you just wonder what might have been without that touch. But he is tracking pretty well here, Joe but Clark. Bit of a powerhouse on the water. He can pull hard and get himself into or out of any situation. He's going to be right. The split time is very wow. close. So there he is. He's up on the split. Even with that touch, that is impressive. Well, uh, Titian Kastrick also had a touch, so they're probably dead level at the moment, which is some good paddling. He's going to go very close to being under 90 seconds, I think. This is a good finish. He's going to be just outside, I think, but a good run for... No, he's the new race leader with a touch. Joe Clark. Giovanni doesn't look happy, but... Uh, <laughs> That was a fierce run from Joe. He did what not let run. up. All right, Peter Kauser now, 59 years of age, still paddling really fast. I mentioned before he was going to throw it away after Tokyo, but with just the three-year Olympic uh, program, he decided to have one more crack at it, and he's out here today and challenging for a medal. Absolutely. He's an incredibly technical paddler, Peter. You know, he's spent hours and hours on the water. Um, so smooth, so controlled. He's really got flair. He's an impressive paddler to watch. A little bit down on the split, but there's still plenty of time to make that up. He uh, loves paddling in uh, tucks, and we see him there, and he always has that big fan base that come and watch him paddling there. Uh, one year I saw him put down a run there. Look at this, he's now under the split. I saw him put down a run in Taksim on you that I still say is one of the best runs I've ever seen in Canoe Slow. And he went off after that and had a little nap. He got out of camp bed, got the camp bed out of the uh, the team tent, lay down and had a little nap. It's all about recovery in sport. It's yep. one of the most important things. Yeah, for sure. But uh, this is fast. Yeah, he's on an impressive run. This is a really good run here from Peter Kauser. Can he stay clean? Whatever you do, Peter Kauser, do not give judges cause to have a look at a 50. Please don't do it because we don't need the grief uh, and the anxiety of waiting to see what happens. But he's pretty looking good. very tidy. This might compete with Joe's run. It could well do. I, I think he's going to go under 90, is it? And that is going to be very close to a so gold medal power. time. What a wow. run. Wow. Peter Kauser, you are that back. That was impressive. Peter Kauser, you are back. Silver medal at the last two World Cups. Both times he was denied by his Czech teammate, Yuri Prishkovich. Prishkovich is not there today, but Peter Kauser is. Yeah, look, Vic Prindis, the Czech K1 men team is so, so impressive. Like, such great paddlers, possibly the most competitive group of K1 men in the world. Um, and they push each other to achieve more and more. Well, at the risk of sounding like a broken record, I'll say it again. There are a handful of athletes that do our sport <clears throat> who have never been to an Olympic Games, and to me, it is heartbreaking, and this man is one of them. It's hard to believe that somebody of his quality, he's been a world champion, he's been on, at the top of the tree, he's probably easily in the top five, probably in the top two best paddlers of the modern era, and he's never been to an Olympics. Wow, and oh my goodness, Ooh. just as we've seen how fast that split was, he's had a massive edge in that up. Kind of bucking bronco going through those gates. Still clean though. Oh no! <laughs> oh, gate five. Gate five. <laughs> so I give the man a big rap, but I'll stand by everything I've said about Vic Prindis. Look, he's still. It's still possible for him to be on the podium. He's such a great technical paddler. His time in this bottom section. So he's got about a second he needs to make up, and Kauser was fast at the bottom. So. It's 
Third place is 1.71 behind first at the moment, okay. so it is still in the running. He's in the running for a medal. Probably not a gold now, but uh, can he shake this tree and possibly win a bronze? Uh, yes, well, he's moved into, into third. third. He's moved into third. That gate touch. It's going to come down to the Spanish man. Yep. And Joe Clark has a medal as well, so he'd be pretty happy with that.